The Japanese believe that we all have three faces. First, we show to the entire world. Second, we show to the friends and family. Third, we never show to anyone. I feel this is the purest version of ourselves. Today I'd like to encounter this one. Today I'd like to talk about the third phase, something people avoid their entire life. Perhaps I've avoided it for a long time, my entire life too. But today I want to talk about it. Today I want to encounter the third phase. Tomorrow I want to wake up like a new man and I want to look myself into the mirror, staring right into those eyes and say, this is who I am. Well, just to start with, my name is Ank Moving Arts and I've been into existence for past three years now. But before I shall begin, I should find a relevant individual to whom you could relate to. Because I've learned that humans are rigid things and metaphors are difficult to understand for a lot of us. So how about this guy? You see right over there? Yep, you got it. This one, the guy who's running over there. Well, he wants to look cool. He wants to gain the world attention. Yeah, he really wants. But I mean, he's not bad, I think he would be able to do the job. He's a jackass, but it's alright. Let's talk about this one I call Confessions of an Artist. Where shall I begin? First things first, I didn't really grow up with role models. I grew up with men I never wanted to be like. You know, life is difficult when you're a kid and you don't really have a role model. For most men, for most boys, as teenagers or as young men, Especially as kids, their father is their role model. I never have had this luxury. My father passed away when I was nine. But I met a lot of people, especially the women. I met a lot of women who changed me, who made me the person who I am in so many ways. And today I'm gonna appreciate them. Now I'll take some names and some names I'll just let it be. Someday, if they stumble upon this conversation, I want them to navigate if it's them or if I'm discussing someone else. I'm gonna talk about the first person who gave me an excellent piece of advice on 18th of October 2016. Yeah, that was the date. She was a transgender woman, a makeup artist, as well as an escort. She said, be presentable at whatever you do. You could be something else. You could be something really great. Now, I always thought that being presentable could be as being pretentious. And that's what my understanding was. And that's what I cultivated in me, especially when I was in Dubai. But now I realize gradually being presentable is like, you know how to express yourself, but in the best possible way, in the best possible manner. It could be your accent. It could be the way you dress up, your appearance, the way you talk to people, your confidence so many things they are a combination of being presentable that was a great piece of advice it really changed my life i talk about the second person this person i can't take her name because i don't even know her name ironic right it's interesting because yeah i really don't know her name where she comes from all I knew that she was there when I really needed something. On 
23rd of August 2019, I met with a motorbike accident in Vietnam. I was doing the high jump loop. I'm not sure if you are aware of it. Some say it's slightly dangerous, not too much. But I crashed my motorbike on the last day, on the seventh day, in a really tiny village where no one knows anyone. And when I crashed the motorbike, I saw people just going, hey, why? And it was quite a panicky. And they took me to the local hospital where no one speaks English. There's no doctor who wants to touch me. And then they moved to the next city, which is Cao Bang in Vietnam. Irrespective, well, I spent eight days without my family because they had to come to Vietnam from abroad. I'd like to tell you, if you don't speak Vietnamese and you're vegetarian, you're pretty fucked in, in Vietnam in so many ways. But I will tell you the best thing about Vietnam. There's this nurse, I don't know her name, I don't know anything about her. She took care of me for eight days. She continuously checked on me. She offered me porridge, she got vegetables, not vegetables, she got some foods for me from time to time. There were a lot of people they helped me. And they helped me in a way, like, I was on their mercy. I was pretty starving most of the time, but it's all right. I never, this is another thing with me. I never ask for favors. I'm like, I die here starving, but I, I don't want to ask people. I remember the guy who was right next to me, he was smoking inside the hospital. It was so crazy and funny. But he gave me his flip-flops when he left the hotel. Sorry, it was hospital, not the hotel. It was the hospital, yeah. And he used to give me one can of milk. I remember that, I, I really remember that. And yeah, it was chocolate milk. I don't like chocolates, but it was a great gesture. Everyone was really nice to me, not just because I was dying and I was just, they were nice. At least they have had a foreigner entertaining them just by laying over there waiting to die. I mean, I knew I'm not gonna die, but as a metaphor. I remember that nurse. Someday I'll go back to Vietnam and find her again. Which, I, which reminded me, I can't really go to Vietnam because they banned me. Well, why to hide? Like I said, it's a confession of an artist. They banned me because I stayed in the country for three years on wrong visas. It's all right, I mean, I can get a new passport, right? And I will get back with a new passport. I'm working on it. Ha, huh, the third person, no. Oh yeah, the third person I wanna talk about. This person is special. I met her on 31st of May, 2021. Now before I move ahead, I don't have a leisure or I'm not reading from the script. It's just my memory. I think I have a very photographic memory. I could remember things, the details, as well as dates when things happen, if they are really important to me. Otherwise, I don't even remember if I brushed my teeth this morning or not. That's just crazy, right? I met her on 31st of May, 2021. I see her coming for the first time towards me. Short hair girl with different color eyes. I remember the I remember what she was wearing. She was wearing check color, black and white layer, pink tank top, denim shorts and skin color sandals which she lost after a couple of months. She said something to me on 5th of April 2022 around 9 o'clock. I remember this. She said I'm weak. It's interesting because you know all my life I've never been told that I'm weak. Perhaps I was. Actually, I wasn't. It's just like when your plans didn't work out, you don't really know how to come up. And I'm a very patient person. Even if I fail, I don't really reflect. I let people judge what they want to judge. But yeah, I took that one. I really took that one. 2022 was an interesting year. I have had a lot of failures. A lot of failures. And somehow these people get me going. I remember 18th of July 2022 again. I spoke to two people. The first one is the same and let's talk about the second person I talked on that day. She's a Korean friend of mine who lives in Canada. 
and it's interesting because I met her for the first time in 2020 and then for two two and a half years I never talked with her never ever and on that day I texted her and I got a phone call we had a I think we had a decent conversation a video call and it was her who gave me this great idea who destroyed my life in a way and then it created my life as well she said Ang, you're an artist and you should be alone. And that's what she said, I remember, and I'm quoting her words, not mine. It was 18th of July, 2022. See, the dates are so important in so many ways, right? Post that I disconnected myself from the entire world, all the friends I used to have, professional relationships, personal relationships, ex-friends, wife, girlfriends, whatever, my family, mother, brother, Cousins, anyone I used to know ever before that day, I just gave up. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I'm going to reinvent myself. It was that day and it, it's today. I never spoken to anyone. Never. I got, I used, even when I got phone calls from my mother, I never attended. I know my aunt passed away. My mother was in the hospital. A lot of things happened. And, I never looked back. It's interesting because it sounds so selfish of me, but I feel this, this sometimes you need this very important thing for yourself. You just, you know, you found yourself somewhere else. I, I want to transcend into something else. And I think it's a fair trade because I never complain about my personal things, the problems I have had. Or a lot of things well to be honest like this is a confession which I should definitely say I have a lot of mental problems not just me my entire family which people don't accept and I understand why but if I talk about my family although they are very open-minded I don't know why I discontinue talking to them because I think my mom is the coolest person you she's the coolest Indian mother you could find because she's westernized, super westernized. And now I get it because of my grandfather. He was a doctor and during 1950s and 60s, if you are a doctor in, in the Indian society, that's a big deal. Everyone on my mother's side, they are highly qualified individuals. Half of them were doctors or teachers or my mom served in the defense for three decades which is a long time but then they are too honest and they are retarded a lot of them everyone except my mother somehow she escaped I feel this way I, I really feel this way that you cannot live when you're untouchable life is really about vulnerability and you need to be very spontaneous because it's it's full of a lot of different dynamics which are constantly changing Although my experience says that the struggle is good, probably that's what I've learned, that the struggle is the best part about this life, for sure. I want to talk about this person. I don't know her much. It was like a really short-lived, I mean, it wasn't even short-lived, it was just an encounter. I met Sam last year in 2022, somewhere in the month of Feb, the February 22. She was sitting right across the table in a tiny restaurant in Goa when I saw her for the first time. Actually, I just hear her because I was facing her back and I was somehow really intrigued by her accent and I was so curious which part of the UK she comes from. I'm very intrigued about the accent. I, I find it really interesting. So if I don't know you, if I don't see you, it doesn't matter. But if I can hear you and I'm like, I want to know. That's interesting to me. I guess I don't know which part of the UK she came from, but later on I discovered I had a real quick click with Sam when her boyfriend left to the ADM and I started talking and I'm like, she's from South Africa. It's interesting, I never thought that. But great, I, I enjoyed these kind of 
moments when you just click with people you meet them and like boom you go like this is super interesting Sam is a pediatrician from Johannesburg if I wasn't wrong but I really liked her she was nice she was bubbly I like people with energy and positive attitude most important people with brain the good thing about Sam or something which I've learned from her I asked her later on that night or a couple of nights later I don't remember but we went out my brother had a crush on her that's interesting but one thing I really got from Sam when I asked her the question how would you describe yourself in one word and she was like mm, I'm pretentious it was like an eye opening answer for me because i'm super pretentious i'm really pretentious person i've lived my life like that and it's not my mistake let me be real honest about it i feel like probably when you don't have a dad people think that okay you can do much probably single mother is also not so strong that's how people think so i i started being pretentious i'm like i don't want to look like I'm not strong enough I want to look like I'm the strongest even when I wasn't so it's interesting and that's what I've learned from Sam that okay, I'm pretentious too because I'm always telling the truth that I'm lying to I lied to my family I lied to my brother I lied to my mother I like I lied to my friends everyone and then I tell them honest answers as well if they ask me or if they care which that the problem is like when you are being honest people don't believe and i say to people oh i'm indian they don't believe it but and if i say oh i come from from europe or if i say i come from america i'm like oh wow now i believe you my favorite one is when i say to people i'm pakistani i love it this works like a charm in india you should visit and say i'm from pakistan and you look at the people like I was with the I was with this group last year I called the Queen Indians IITNs and NRIs and big business owners or something like that and the one of the girls asked me and in the heat of the moment I like to surprise people and I said well I'm your neighbor I come from Pakistan I really got this tear I, I love that part and the first question after 5 seconds of silence they have had this another guy who asked me like how did you get in and I'm like what do you think I took a flight and that's how I get in so I love this I I mean even if you find it offended be my guest I would say 9 to 5 people are pretty boring to me now they're super boring and I don't find them interesting at all I've met like thousands and thousands of people so far So now I feel like I want to have interesting conversation and these typical questions about myself another stereotype let's talk about it real quick because we are having confessions right So I have a very light skin people don't buy that I'm I could be Indian Indians don't buy I'm Indian I go out and they don't think I'm Indian too One of my neighbors recently told me she's from New York he she said So one of your parents is a Caucasian and I'm like no they're Indians. Maka my great friend the first African friend I ever met who changed my entire vision about Africa Maka he used to call me the white boy. Now, let me tell you there's a lot of people who have light skin in India. If you visit the northern part you would see. Yeah of course you don't see them everywhere. I I met this guy a Dutch guy he's a great Bollywood fan and he we have had this discussion telling me that you know I went to Delhi and I'm like where is all these Bollywood people and I'm like well you don't find them on roads but he was actually referring to the skin color and he told me I could be from so many different countries but not Indian it's interesting people have a difficult time I should perhaps get a tattoo on my forehead that I'm Indian. Well, I don't really mind not being Indian so much. 
because I love that if you have a different skin color and if you speak English in a very different way then it's difficult to fit in and another reason people don't accept that there are differences in the society and people do judge book by its cover I've been given a lot of preferences and advances in my life just based on the way I look and I followed the first advice which has been given to me be presentable and I tried to be presentable and I took advantage of the things I've been given to people just take for granted and they say no I don't believe in this I don't believe now I got the jobs in in Vietnam just because I have had this light color skin or as Maka said white boy or I don't look like I belong to a certain part of the world and I don't speak like them so I got a lot of advantages unnecessary unfair advantages because if I just talk about myself and Maka who comes from Ghana Africa we work at the English Academy and he was by far the best teacher I've ever met. He was like real charm, the purest soul I've ever met. But I got more benefits just because the way I lived. And I understand, yeah, people do judge. I don't I don't accept it, but that's how the world is and we need to change it because I say and I accept that at that point in time he was far better teacher than I was. And he is by far one of the best people I've ever met in my life. My great friend, my roommate, Maka from Ghana. I remember you, my friend. You remind me of Trevor Noah. No, Trevor Noah reminds me of you. It's interesting. Ah, let's talk about the next person who inspired me, right? My real encounters we are discussing and my fears and anxieties. Okay, next person is Giraffe. I met her last year in the Middle East. Now, there's a reason I call her Giraffe. A Serbian girl born and brought up in Boston, Massachusetts. So, she's Serbian-American. Now, Giraffe has a lot of pros and cons. She comes like a package. She has a great amount of energy. Now, why she's Giraffe, you can obviously guess. She's 5'11.5", which is like 6 feet almost. And she wears stilettos, I'm pretty short. And I love that fact. I think that's what I enjoy the most. I like to see people who are really rough and tough. And I don't mind if they're women, if they're men. I like to see people who have like great character. Giraffe is like fascinating character I met. I respect her the most. I think she on my respect no like no one else. Well, Giraffe is 21 and she's a fashion model she has over 1 million followers on instagram and she's very nice person to a lot of people she isn't but to me she is now she drives her own mercedes and she pays her own rent which is great right but these are the things which i dislike about her. you know why i like her height and I like her being super strong, but I feel she has become very narcissistic about it. Just like myself, yeah, we both have narcissism problems. I told her a lot of times, I told her, I told Mini Giraffe as well. Oh, Mini Giraffe is her sister. I have, why I have a huge respect for her because when she was 17 and a half, she left her place. She left her dad. I'd never asked. They have had arguments or differences, just like every other family. But Giraffe wanted to be a professional model. First she survived with friends and then friends couldn't help her. She started doing some odd jobs, you know. As a woman, you, what kind of odd jobs I'm referring to. I, I used to think Giraffe is a lesbian. And that's how she is. She's, she's definitely lesbian or at least bisexual to me. And I, I became friends like I'm gay. At that time I was in a different life. I was in a really different zone and I'm like, it's all right. And I don't like to give right answers. I'm like, I'm gay. I know girls have a soft corner for gay guys. Giraffe's dad is a clinical psychologist and it reflects into him. And it reflects in her personality. 
Well, how she changed me and how she gained my respect. She told me I have OCD because of so many things I've done. She observed me. Half of the times I was at her place and she was mine. She observed me and she said I have this issue. It's interesting when people tell you and then you take it instead of saying, Oh no, I don't have, no, I didn't even know what OCD was. It's a situation where you constantly have issues with having everything very systematic. You want your apartment to be clean. You want your toilets to be nicely, neatly done. And you don't want to touch the doorknobs or something because you're very suspicious about getting infected. I'm not inf suspicious, I just feel it dirty. But it's okay, I mean, hey, it's not as bad as AIDS, right? Although, well, AIDS is not bad too. It's just that people have made it a very, I don't know, it's a disease and no one has control over diseases. Let's talk about any other person I know I've known. Oops, the list is over. Seems like I haven't met so many people. Oh wait, no. There's two people I can talk about. One is definitely my mom. Now, what can I talk about her? There's everything and then there's nothing. I've been out of touch for a little over a year now, but I should say that I have a great amount of respect for the lady. She raised two kids in the best possible way. She sent them to the best universities and schools. Although they didn't turn out real good as she might have expected. No, I think two of us failed her miserably. At least I feel. I, I, I say I'm not a great son. And that's why we are here, having confessions, right? So I'm not a great son, but I'm, I'm, I must say, I might not be a great son, but I'm trying to be a great person. I remember it was Seneca. Yeah, I think it was Seneca who said like, let's try to have the second part of your life, striving to be the best, striving to develop, striving to become something. Not for anyone else, but for yourself. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to correct my mistakes. It's this woman I should talk about. She was a beautiful person. I met her in 2019. Gosh, there are some some certain years which are so important. You meet some people, duck, 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 and you have this great connection and they taught you a great lesson. She was from California. And she was living like I don't remember, maybe 30, 40 miles away from my place. And we used to, I used to go to her place on the weekends and she visited mine a few times. She used to make the best burritos, by the way. She was amazing making Mexican food. And although she wasn't from Mexico, she was from California. But she treated me really nice. I felt that there was a really nice friendship, really good friendship. But I never cared. All these people I never cared. It's interesting. Or maybe I cared. I just never showed. Yeah, that's me. I never show my emotions or my feelings or my anxieties. The same way I never told a lot of things about myself. 
a lot of things like where should I say I spent seven months in the slums of Mumbai where they don't have the toilets have you ever thought of me living in those slums you saw in the slum dog millionaire yeah I lived there for seven seven months I've I was just 18 I was dumb broke and I felt this is gonna be the difficult most difficult thing in my life and I'm like today I look at it and I'm so proud of myself I survived it was horrible and it was so enlighten, enlightening at the same time. I never talked about the guy I almost killed in Goa. Yeah, I mean, it happens, right? He was trying to break in and he was trying to rape my neighbor who was from the UK and she was physically disabled, so I didn't want to, but I had to. And it was an accident back in 22 in Goa again. That's a horrible city. I don't want to go. No, I'm just kidding. Someday I'll get back. Because I've learned something about this life and world. And even if I'm wrong, I'll, let me try to tell you, there is no good and bad people in this world. They are weak and strong. Like, there must be a lot of people at given point in time for whom even Hitler was a hero. And... He must have done something good for a certain amount of people. But he was a weak man. It's not like, you know, they were not born evil. It's like, you were born in a way. No good, no bad. When you see an infant, you don't know how he or she is going to turn. It's like when people can't really control their emotions, their positive side, loses against the negative side people become really dark from inside and then they become evilish and devilish and they do all these activities so i'm not a great fan of hitler no he was he was i mean he was a normal person who did the wrong things so it really impacted all of us because same way you can say a lot of things about oppenheimer now, i'm not referring to the movie i know oppenheimer long before probably Christopher Nolan decided to make a movie out of it but then same like in some in so many ways we can say that it's just the people if you don't give them labels it's like you have a lot of emotions you have a lot of fears and anxieties which accumulate over the period of time and then you become like a good person or a bad person based out of it I would say become a good person. It's more rewarding. It's definitely more rewarding. Don't think about the hell in heaven. Let me tell you, heaven is really boring, just like the nice people. Now, I think it was Dr. Jordan Peterson who said, well, you look at the rabbit and you look at the wolf. So, rabbit is harmless, but he can't even protect himself. So, he's not virtuous. Same with the nice people. Some are pretentious, some are just naturally super nice. So, no, you don't want to be like rabbit. You don't want to be like the nice guy who, who has no value except the label of being nice or being pretentious and just like myself. No, I want to be dangerous. I, want, I love to be dangerous. I'm like, if you're with me, you should feel that you're strong. That you should always have this fear that something could go wrong but then again we have this confidence we can solve it that's what I like it's like you have this monster inside you and then you learn how to tame it I really I really agree to Dr. Jordan Peterson on this one although I don't agree to a lot of ideas he throws on the internet and everywhere so I can talk about this thing I was abused as a child sexually abused so I don't call it as an incest relationship and, and neither I blame the person. You see, a lot of mental problems are there and yeah, people just can, people just become very isolated and then they start doing something which is not so appropriate. I have had this kind of uh, very, you know, incestuous 
kind of relationship with my aunt, one of my aunts. And it doesn't really matter because I don't have any grudges. I just, I'm just fortunate that I don't start hating people. Uh, don't start hating women just because of that experience. I feel I may have lost my virginity before I've even learned about what it what it is. She was a troubled woman, and I understand her. She have had a difficult past, and she went the same way. Had a difficult life, and and I'm I'm not the kind of person who likes to keep peace with the past. No, I I go back in time and. Try to get the lessons out of it and to make a life better. Oh, shit, I forgot to talk about Danielle. No, this is the only guy we're gonna talk about. I've learned something great from him. Danielle and I, we went to a really interesting, really short hike in Pushkar. Yeah, he was from England. He was a math teacher. I hate math. And I hate math teacher as well, but... Daniel was too cool to be hated. So Daniel is the guy who seeded this idea into my brain. Let me tell you, Daniel is the guy who's super energetic. I mean, I feel I'm energetic, but Daniel is next level. He was traveling in India for eight months and he visited like 65 cities. He would probably embarrass you if you want to talk about India. He has far more knowledge than anyone I've ever met about India, about the culture, about the people. He knows about the buses and trains and taxis. I mean, something I don't even know. Some cities I've never even heard of he visited and he could describe you like he lived there for years. Great guy. Now, he seeded this idea to, into my head that organ donation is a great thing to do. I never thought about it. Although, somehow it got stuck into my mind and I dwell on it for a couple of months until I met a guy in Serbia in Belgrade who was blind and right before going to the Everest I also donated all my organs I'm like if I die I want to be something good I want to be I want to live forever this is good you know this is really good I mean it's very satisfying to me I know I'm gonna lose a lot of things based on this. I'm gonna I know I'm gonna lose a lot of contracts. I have some legal cases going on. I don't mind. I, I love it. Did I tell you I love challenges? Life is worthless if you're living like an underdog. No, that is not for me. I'm too bold. Now boldness reminds me of something real quick, but from here on we we move faster because we have very limited time which is flying and then we are also running low on the memories yeah these are the memories on the footage so let me be real quick about certain things I feel like we all have to develop the character which is far more important than anything else and solitude isn't always bad it gives you the opportunity to become a better person in the comfort of your own company because a lot of people I know they are scared of being alone and they've always wanted to be with someone it's, it's more like you're piling on someone for for your necessities, which which is sometimes it's all right. I mean, we all do that. But I think there is no greatness to be found in, in the groups or in a big groups. It, it has to be found individually. When it comes to the internal greatness, it, it could only come out when you're alone. It's same as like, you know, the greatest things or the greatest happiness couldn't be given from outside it should be from inside there's nothing outside on the platter you have to build it and uh, one more very important thing uh, someone asked me to call out a name William Shakespeare said if it's a rose doesn't matter if I call it a rock it would still smell so nice and it would still look so beautiful so name isn't important the most important thing is the message behind it sometimes words aren't enough it's like you have to find the particular gap in between and you have to understand the silences but uh, it, it's it's really fascinating because Khalil Gibran put it into this words like what is said and not meant and what is meant and not said all love is lost a lot of people may you know subjugate this entire conversation in a way that 
it's very controversial or, or some might think oh my gosh such a brave person coming out all this way and now this is one of the greatest things about social media as i'm part of this community as hank moving arts and it's my third birthday so even though i don't like the surrounding this entire area which is full of negativity and a lot of keyboard warriors the best thing about social media is like i could be anyone i could be a psychologist i could be a psychotherapist i could be a psychopath i could be a you know i could i could be a politician a murderer a doctor a soldier this is the best thing about being on social media and that's what i call being an artist you could be anywhere there's no black and white there's always the gray shade so there is no authenticity about uh, all these things people say or do as an artist because it's not a courtroom trial it's just a way of conveying the message about yourself expressing your emotions or ideas people have different ways of expressing themselves some are more creative than the later but that's amazing i would say I say just be who you are but then it doesn't mean how people say oh just be who you are that's that's also a very detrimental thing because what if you're just an asshole or you're a good for nothing person so you have to understand who you are you have to stick to that idea and then eventually you have to grow out of it it's like you know people love rock as well and people love flame people love all sorts of things people love nature and then people love bombs as well yeah there are people who can, who enjoy those kind of things so you need to understand if you are on the right side or on the left side don't look for the political approval or the government signs of being a good person or bad person decide for yourself hold a party where all of the people are invited good people bad people you know it's a celebration of life so you should do it and yeah i would say just good to people acceptability is a very difficult thing and that's the biggest growth you can have like no social media no fame no popularity no money no women no sex no power nothing is as comparable as self acceptance understand how good or how bad you are and then from there on you start reflecting on yourself you start expressing yourself and the most important thing you start enhancing yourself to become something better Again like I said you don't have to do it for others you have to do it for yourself become a character develop a character and that's how it it will go Khalil Gibran said beautiful words there are two kinds of men in this world one who awakes in the dark and one who sleeps in the light don't sleep in the light awake in the dark I watched a movie and uh, there was a beautiful line there was a beautiful question like do you believe in a love that burns fast and lasts forever i feel like love is an umbrella term and how would you decide what really love is because it's such a massive word it comes in a lot of different ways maybe you're sitting outside feeling really hot the wind which is blowing all of a sudden could be love you're feeling really thirsty and all of a sudden you found a river when you're walking in the jungle that could be love as well it has a lot of definitions it not necessarily has to do with the physicality of something it doesn't really have to be someone's presence into your life you can appreciate someone in a lot of different ways and that's what it's all about i'm i'm appreciating people whom i have lost long time ago and it's all right that's life last words well i'll see you around